Whenever we create a new vehicle instance, we'll want to tie it to a policy object. To do that, we'll create a stateless business process that will perform unattended functions such as relating the vehicle object to the policy object. A stateless business process is a process whose state is not maintained in the document and repository. It's executed synchronously. This makes it easy for the XCP application to wait for and use the process variables output by the process. Anyway, it can't involve any human or manual tasks. All tasks have to be automatic. However, a stateless process can invoke a stateful or normal process that does contain human tasks. In that case, the stateless process won't have to wait for the stateful process to complete. Stateless processes are useful in designing XCP applications as they can be bound to the XCP application's widgets and events. They replace the need for things like custom forms adapters used in XCP1. So instead of having to write code to execute as a result of clicking a custom button, we can define a stateless process with the desired functionality. Oh, also, a stateless process is transactional, similar to how database transactions work. If any one of the process's activities fail, any changes made to the document and repository, such as addition, modification, or deletion of folders, will be rolled back. In our application, because a vehicle object will only ever be created in relation to a policy, we won't use the automatically generated create data service for a vehicle since it doesn't provide the ability to relate the newly created vehicle to a policy. So instead, we'll create our own data service using a stateless business process to create the vehicle and then relate it to the policy. In the XCP Navigator, select the Processes tab, and then click the green Add Process button. For Label, enter Vehicle Create and Relate to Policy. Then click Process Can Run in Stateless Mode and click Finish. For those of you who are familiar with the old Process Builder tool, you recognize how to use a Process Editor in XCP Designer. This is where we lay out and configure the workflow, or the business process. Click the Process Properties button to add a package and some process variables. Select the Data tab. This is where we create the process variables that can be passed from activity to activity in the process. Select the Packages node. Click the green Add button at the top left. On the right, package PKG underscore vehicle. Uncheck the This is a Mandatory Package option and select Vehicle for the type. In the pane on the left, select the Process Variables node and click the Add button again. The first process variable will be v underscore make, then click apply. Add the v underscore model process variable, add the v year process variable, for its type select integer, add the v underscore vin process variable, this will be a normal string. Add a string process variable named v underscore policy underscore id. Now add a date time process variable named v underscore start underscore date. And for type, select date time. Then let's click apply. Add another date time process variable. And we'll name this one v underscore end underscore date. For type, select date time again. Now add a string process variable named v underscore notes. Remember, these are the three custom properties that we added to the relationship object between vehicles and policies. Add another string process variable named v underscore cabinet and then click apply. Now select the composite service tab. The use as fields from XCP Designer 2.0 were moved to this tab in XCP Designer 2.1. For all the variables, check the use as input checkbox for each. And click 
click OK. We're going to be adding three activities between the initiate and end activities. So let's slide the end activity over to the right to make room for them. In the activities pane on the right, if we expand the content node, we'll be able to drag a create activity onto the canvas. Now let's drag two set process data activities to the canvas. Among other things, the first set process data activity will provide us the functionality to set process and package variables as well as passing variables back to the calling routine. Now let's demonstrate the XCP Designer process layout tools to arrange our activities. Lasso all the activities and right click on any of them. Then choose Alignment Middle. Finally, click anywhere in the white area of the canvas to deselect the activities. Select the Flow Lines tool from the toolbar and connect all the activities together from left to right. And then disable the Draw Flow Lines mode by clicking on the Selector Toolbar button. Now let's double click the Create activity to open its Activity Inspector. Change the name of the activity to Create Vehicle and tell it that we want to use the Folder Path method as opposed to a Folder Object ID to describe the folder where the vehicle business objects will be stored. For the Create Object section, click the Select button, select Vehicle, and then click Finish. Now click Next. So the user interface for this part of the Activity Inspector Wizard can take some getting used to. This is the Input Message Mapping Wizard page. The next wizard page after this is the Output Message Mapping. What we'll be doing here is mapping the values of process variables as input from the left to the Create Activity properties on the right. We can think of the Create Activity's properties as function arguments to the Create function. This column on the left, the source, is where the data from the program comes from. Often these come from the settings on the Inputs tab of Data Service Instances or we call them interactions now. They also come from other places such as the workflow, tasks, application parameters, etc. The data mapping function is in the middle here. There's various forms of data mapping functions, but we'll mostly use the copy function. Let's add a copy function now for each mapping of process variables to the create activity properties. In the Select Function combo box, select the Copy function. In the Source, expand the Variables node and select V underscore Make. Can you see how this created a connection line between the V underscore Make process variable to the Copy function? Now on the right, let's select Vehicle Make. Now you can see that the V underscore Make process variable will be mapped to, or its value will be copied to, the Create Activities Vehicle Make property. Now let's keep going and map some of the other process variables to the create activity properties. Start by adding another copy function. Then map the vModel process variable to the model property of the create activity. Map the vYear process variable to the year property of the create activity. Map the vVin process variable to the vin property of the create activity. Map the V underscore cabinet process variable to the destination folder path property of the create activity. Now for the name activity property, we'll map that to the vvin process variable also. The vvin variable is already mapped to the vvin activity property, but that doesn't mean it can't be mapped to something else also. Watch how I select the line drawing tool and draw another line at the point where the line is coming out of the vvin variable where it meets the edge of the source box. Now the v underscore vin process variable is mapped to two different activity properties. We want to make sure that we disable the line drawing mode and switch back to the selection mode. Now we're ready to configure the output mapping. Click Next. This output message mapping wizard page is where we essentially configure what the output of the create activity will be. Remember, in this business process, 
the create activity flows to the first set process data activity. That activity will need to copy the documentum object ID of the vehicle business object that it created in the object ID of the vehicle package. So let's add a copy function and map the create activities ID property on the left to the object ID property of the PKG underscore vehicle package on the right. And click OK. Now, double click on the set process data activity to open its activity inspector. Set process data activities allow you to set or modify process data as it flows between two activities. Change the activity's name to relate vehicle to policy. Now, add a copy function and map the V policy ID process variable on the left to the package underscore vehicle policy relationship policy object ID on the right. So remember, each vehicle has a relationship defined for its policy. This is where the stateless process ties them together, as the name of this activity implies. We need to point out that we're not allowed to create a relationship and set its attributes in a single activity. That's why we have the second set process data activity to set the values of the relationship's custom properties. Click OK. Let's configure the second set process data activity to map the process variables for start date, end date, and notes to the relationship. First, let's change the activity name to Set Relation Activities. Now let's add a copy function and map the V underscore start underscore date process variable to the policy relationships start date property. Repeat to map the V underscore end underscore date process variable to the policy relationships end date property. And one last time to map the V underscore notes process variable to the policy relationships notes property. Click OK. Save the process and close the process model editor. It's always a good idea to check the Problems tab for errors. So now we have a stateless process that creates a new instance of the vehicle business object in the concordant cabinet. At the same time, it relates the vehicle object to the policy and sets the custom relationship attributes.